join me to invoke the name of teacher three times. Namo Sakya Muni Buddha Namo Sakya Muni Buddha Namo Sakya Muni Buddha talk to you about some controversy we have here uh, recently in uh, <coughs> the Buddhist community. Okay? There we <coughs> recently in Louisiana. One of the uh, monks there in Baton Rouge, I think they came in to court. He's a French uh, monk. He's, uh, he practiced uh, Tibetan Buddhism. He's a very, very famous man. He had one man, he had a uh, Nobel Prize for, uh, I think, for about biology many years ago. And he joined, he became a monk at age 21. He is now over over 70, so been over 50 years, he uh, says about one of the uh, Rinpoche, the Tibetan monk, and one have American name. They do some misconduct, you know, about sexual misconduct, something. To me, you know, we should pass any judgment because we don't know the story. So let the secular judgment then go to some conclusion. But as far as Buddhist person, I believe in a karma. If they commit any misconduct, any things not good, it's their karma. Sooner or later, they pay for their karmic action. So, as a good Buddhist person, we should not pass any judgment, like a hasty judgment. We think good or bad or something. We don't know, okay? And Buddha say this one, and we have to think about this one. He said, the help of the lion is from the worm inside the body of the lion, okay? So, we have to think about that. So, sometimes, as uh, our organization, sometimes some bad element can cause some ill effect to the community. But we should not pass any judgment, hasty judgment. Just things like this, like at the 35th uh, president of the country, he said, then ask what the country do to you. Ask yourself, what do you do to the country? So, as a Buddhist person, ask yourself, what I bring, what I contribute to our temple, and ask what our temple do to be. Because if we think the temple is our temple, it's common property, we need to maintain, we need to protect that institution. The institution doesn't belong to any individual. It doesn't belong to monk or nun. It's a common property. It belongs to the Buddha. It's our father. We are the children of the Buddha. So we just behave like his children. Okay? We try to be good children of the Buddha. We practice Buddhism the right way. And you remember Albert Einstein, he's a scientist. He admired Buddhism. He said this one, Buddhism is true religion. He said the religion of the cosmos. He said the other religion, the religion of the world. You know the world 
the last of that long, maybe two, three million years, this world will disappear. So their religion, all religion, they disappear. But Buddhism would not disappear because Buddhism is the most mixed religion. And just think about that. Buddhism goes to another planet. And it's still there. It's so pretty. It's wonderful religion. You look about that, the religion of peace, the religion of love. Many religions, they're good, you know. They are relative good. But you think about, they claim they have a holy war. War is not holy. Think about that, war has never been holy. If you say holy war, it's a misconception. War is ugly, war is evil. No matter what you do for war, war is either evil. It causes suffering. It causes a lot of suffering to humanity. So it cannot be holy. And Buddhism, we never have a war. We get killed. We don't, we don't kill anybody. Remember 11th century, they burned two university. They killed 100,000 monks. They run away. They run away to Sri Lanka. They run away to Tibet. They hide in the cave. They bring the book with them. They then fight back. They don't go they now counter guerrilla or something. Remember Dalai Lama. He's the head of the state. He's the head monk. He never organized anything. The Tibetan, they look like the Chinese. They can go to Beijing. They can have a human bomb. They can have a guerrilla. They can cause problem to the Chinese. No, they didn't do it. Because we practice Buddhism. Sooner or later, the Chinese in pay back. Sooner or later, Xi Ping in pay back. Xi Ping, his wife, she's a Buddhist person. But he did it. He still do it. But his wife, she's Buddhist. Okay? It's amazing. So, as a Buddhist person, we try to act correctly. Okay? And think about, if you love Buddhism, at your own decision, you feel like it's a good religion. If you want to follow it, do it properly. Do it the right way, okay? Nobody influence you because you're the one to make the decision to go to practice Buddhism. Do it. And it's, it's wonderful. The more you study, the more you see it makes sense to you. It makes a lot of common sense. That's a religion of common sense. It teach you something, you'll be happy. Buddha never says that you have to worship. You know, he's a deity or he's a number one of religion. You say one thing, you say that. One thing you remember, I'm the Buddha in the present time. You are the Buddha in the future. So it's very democratic, okay? He didn't say, I'm the one you have to worship. You cannot reach my level. He said, you reach my level if you do like me. I'm a human being. I try. I make some error. Six years of uh, talk to myself with uh, something I thought maybe I go to extreme. I talk to my body deprivation. I can find uh, alignment. I said no, it's wrong. After that, you find the middle way, and so that the middle way is better. You go to extreme or too much persecution and too much pleasure, you wrong, do wrong. The middle way. So remember the middle way. And that's the best way. And he show us, he just, you know, he just want to, to tell us that do my way and you reach that level, okay? I'm like you. I'm born like you. I have a family. I have a son. I do everything. After that, I find out that I want to find my true happiness. I want to be a monk. I want to liberate myself. Liberation. So I get out of the family, I become a monk. And I devote my time to the practice of Buddhism. I save myself and I show the way to do like me. It's very democratic. And the system is that, you look the um, Buddhist, Buddhist system, that's the first 
26th century ago, you have a parliamentary system. He never goes, he never tell you, I'm the Buddha, I do this way, you have to follow me, because I'm the Buddha, you have to do like me. He said, no, do the way, the right way. And he said, Buddhism adaptable to the time, to the place. Now it's the Buddhism of 21st century. Now in this country, it's American Buddhism. He didn't even say that you have to practice the Indian way or the Nepal way. No, it's, it's adaptable. It's very, very scientific. Buddhism, extremely scientific. You look in science, in everything. Yeah, Buddhism, in art, in everything. Philosophy, the way of life, it's a Buddhism. It's a, so wonderful. So look at that and you learn it. You see the common sense. And <clears throat> the more you learn, the more you admire. And like uh, the, the precept, you study one the precept when in the community of monk, when somebody make a mistake, he didn't say he correct it and say impose and now I have to read that. He said no. They study the mistake. He investigated. They make the cause of mistake. They have a solution. After that, they adopt solution. It become a precept. So all the precept that way. He said he teach that way. He said you make a mistake. Find out what kind of mistake. How they make sense it. After that, find the solution to correct the mistake, and then it become a, a, a precept. He said that's a wonderful way to teach it. And they have no thing, coercion, no thing that, you know, I impose on you because I'm the Buddha. And what is Buddha? Awakened person, that's all, okay? He didn't say, Buddha is a, it's a, like a saint or a deity. No, it's an awakened person. Yeah, awakened. I mean, you have your mind. And he believed this one. Inherently, people, they are good. Not like people who said, you're born a sinner. No, you're born not a sinner. You're born with a Buddha nature. It's an intrinsic value. Something, it's very precious. You're good. You're not good because, it's not because you're, you're bad, because the ignorance, because you didn't see it right. So you make a mistake. But if you see it right, you clear on the obstacle, you go back to your true nature, you go back to your true home. You are a good person. You are a wonderful person. So just a matter of time, you go back to your true home. You find your true nature, your intrinsic value, your Buddha nature. You don't want to call Buddha nature. You call awakened nature. And you are awakened nature. And you become a good person. Look about all these the bad people, the killer, the gangster. They still love their family. They still have something, some love in there. That means inside that person, they still have something good. You know, Hitler, he's a bad guy. He still have a lover. Okay? Like he, Stalin, he killed millions of people. He still love his family, his daughter. He still have it. They have something, they still have love in there. That is something very good. They are not 100% bad. Maybe they 99% bad, 1% is himself and that person still have something good. That's the awakened nature. So Buddha tells you that you have Buddha nature, you have awakened nature, you have intrinsic value, you your true value. It's, it's, it's that intrinsic value. So it, it makes sense. And you go back to find your true nature. If you find your true nature, you get alignment. You both go back to true home, you get alignment. It's difficult because we have so many things, it hinder, the hindrance, it stop us from finding our true nature, our, our true home. But you will find if we try. Maybe we don't find, we don't find this life, maybe next life, next life. Because if we look at the hundred years, we think it's long, but you look at cosmic year, hundred years, that means like a nanosecond, less than a nanosecond. But with us, hundred years too long, way, way too long. It's not that long. 
like you relatively if you drive 100 miles an hour so it's the very fast 120 miles very fast but look at the light the speed of light the 100 miles an hour 120 miles that means nothing but the speed of light still not that fast it takes many minutes from the sun to come in here it's still not that fast so we have something faster than the speed of light so I think relative you didn't go to the absolute we live in the relative world okay so we learn it we learn it and Buddhism help us to learn <coughs> and uh, I will be going to Vietnam for over two weeks I want to buy a little more supply for the temple and uh, Master Quang Chi in help to uh, do the celebration of you and uh, <coughs> do the practice of you I have a lot of faith in my Master Quang Chi. He shows his true nature. I talked to him yesterday. I'm so very happy. I'm very proud of you, Quang Chi. You proved to be a very good monk. Okay? And it's very good. He has a devotion. He has uh, the true love of, uh, of Buddhism. I asked him, and I see him, he study a lot. He uh, practicing a lot. And I talked to him this one, practice going hand in hand with the study. If you study without practice, he become very arrogant. He become a, a scholar, but scholar mean nothing. Scholar and practice mean nothing. Scholar have to do go practice. You see, like in medicine, I talked to him about, about medicine. After we graduate, we have MD degree. That mean nothing. You have to go to internship, you go to residency, you go to practice, even that, you're still not a good doctor. You still prove yourself. You go to hospital, they put you on probation for about three, four years to see if you really, you know how to practice medicine. After many years, the peer review will continue and you continue to have continuing medication, CME, you keep studying, you keep practicing. And you see, in the uh, hospital, when the doctor does the surgery, they have a camera in the, on the ceiling. They take a picture. If they make mistake, they know it. The peer review, they know it. And it's a fantastic. Like a Catholic surgeon, they come in, they want to apply the surgery. They say, we don't let you do the open heart surgery until you have to show 25 cases you did that successfully. So how the guy can do 25 cases here? Yeah, just apply. You have to go in the hospital. You have to assist the other cardiac surgeon. After about 25 cases, then they give him the privilege. Even they give him privilege, they still don't trust him. They still have a camera to watching his technique. And he still, when he operate, he didn't operate by himself. But two, three surgeons operated him. They watching him. So they see the peer review. So you see, it's very good. So I talk Master Quang Chi, said, study and practice. Practice and study go hand in hand. If you study too much, you don't practice, you become extremely arrogant. You think, I know too much. Nobody know too much. We know very little. We learn, we learn. We don't know that much. If anybody claim I know too much, it's a fool. He fooled himself, or she fooled himself. We don't know that much. We know little, and we learn a little bit more. Nobody claims. You see, even the Buddha, they still practicing now. You look at the Sutra, right now, Amitabha Buddha practicing. Right now, Sakyamuni Buddha is practicing. They keep practicing, they keep learning. You look at the sutra, you never have the Buddha, they stop practicing. They practice all the time. They show us the example. They don't say, I'm the Buddha, I stop practicing. No, I practice, I keep practicing. I show to you, I learn, I practice, I teach. It. And I talked to Master Quang Chi, he said, teaching is 50% learning. Because before you teach, 
you have to learn. You have to learn a lot before you teach it. And you teach, you learn. You learn, you teach. Go hand in hand. And practice the same way. You keep practicing. The more you practice, and it's, the practice is so profound. And you even feel it. I cannot say it. The more you practice, the more you understand. You chant the sutra, you chant one time, you don't understand that much. You chant a hundred times, you understand a little bit more. You chant one thousand times, you understand a little bit more. You see, the Lotus Sutra, that's the one we use it. We, in our lineage, we use the Lotus Sutra. And they have 28 chapters, but each time we chant one chapter, like uh, we have one chapter a month, we chant uh, one book. So a uh, year, we chant only 12 times the book. So if uh, they say the monk or the nun tell, I chant the uh, Lotus Sutra a few hundred times, that means how many years? She and he keep learning. And the more every chapter, each chapter, Buddha want to tell you something, teach you something, each chapter. That may you understand. So that means, you know, if you chant a hundred times the Lotus Sutra, that means ten years there. Ten years that Sutra. But if you are one, one thousand times, that's your whole life. So you keep doing it. And in the Buddhism, there are many Sutras. Just find one sutra, you like it. You don't have to chant all the sutras with monk and nun because we have to teach. We do a lot of that, but we go to a main sutra and we do it. But if you want, choose one sutra you like. If you want to practice, Pearl Lamb, chant Amitabha Sutra, that's fine, stay there. If you want Lotus Sutra, stay the Lotus Sutra. If you want Diamond Sutra, stay Diamond Sutra. Something you like, stay one. You cannot go to one, jump one to the other. You can understand many, but stay to one is better. And I would advise, spend time every day, you know. Like, uh, I know that you're busy, you have to make a living. It may be you spend half hour, 45 minutes, one hour to chant it. And it, it makes you happy, it makes you routine. Study, make it, it make you fun, and you chant it, you like it, and make it a habit. And the family, the family, you chant it, your wife chants, your wife chants, you chant, the children chant, your friends, they like it. They said, what? Make sense, make my happy. It make you happy, and another thing too, I don't know if you believe that, you have some merit in there. The merit, you, you feel it. And uh, I tell you about myself, okay, the merit. When I took the, my, uh, when I first came to this country, I have to take the ECFMG. That means the test to get the equal diploma in the MD degree because I'm foreign medical graduate. I went to Dallas and <clears throat> we live in the far away in a small town, West Texas. The man, he bring me from a small town. He didn't know either. So we went to Dallas, we stayed in the motel. And at night, there were a lot of noise there. We cannot sleep. And during the day, I didn't eat either. I forget to bring some candy with me. So when I go to the examination room, my sugar maybe go too low. I feel tired, I feel I see double. I feel a little bit confused. I'm very scared. I said, maybe I'm flung it. So I close my eye. I chant the, the uh, sutra. The, um, and for some reason, my adrenaline go up, my hormone go up, I feel better. And I pass the test. It takes a long test. It's about 10 hours of test but I pass it. So I think it helped. It helped. And every time I have a problem, I invoke the name of uh, Avalokitesvara. I believe in, in her, like I call like my mother, my uh, mercy mother. 
it, it, some uh, tradition is a man, but in the Chinese and Vietnamese tradition, it's a woman, like your mother. Your mother, not the, the love of the mother to the children. So I always I think Avodhusa is my mother. And everything I get problem, I invoke her name. I it passed it. Even when I have a car accident or something, I invoke her name. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt myself either. So I invoke her name. I said, please give me the carefulness. I don't hurt anybody. I don't hurt myself. So, and it helped. It's not superstition, but really it helped. So when we first, when we first built this temple here, at that time we had one American me and the monk and the two, two nuns, we make a line, we go around the temple, we chant it. We chant it around, go around, we do it nine times. And we build the temple. We have no problem. And the people ask me, do you have a permit? I laugh at that. Yes, I do have a permit. I have a permit from Avarov Kiteshvara. <laughs> and I have, we build him, no problem. I have no problem. And uh, the lady, she's the sales person for the real estate. She gave me the permit to build the fences. She paid only $20. That's the permit. Money was to build fences. We didn't have really the permit. And we built everything. And nobody had any problem. The judge in front of the, in front of us, he come to visit us, help us, everything. And all the neighbor, they come in, the president of the neighborhood, she come in, she bring flower. Everybody give us a hand. They very good. So I found that. I said, Mother, I will kiss her, I help us. And we built, we have no problem whatsoever. So I think it, it, it helped. You know, you believe in that. We have a intelligent belief, not the superstition, but the intelligent faith, and it helped. So that, uh, I talked to her today about my feeling, about like uh, the judgment, then pass any hasty judgment to people, to anybody. The thing about ourselves, we are imperfect. Sometimes we make mistakes, but we just try to do repentance. Repentance Buddhism is not like confession. It's like uh, I acknowledge I make a mistake. I promise myself I don't repeat that mistake again and I try to improve myself. I, I make better myself. So that's the repentance in Buddhism. You don't repent to Buddha, to Bodhisattva, just to yourself. I have no legend. And just make yourself a better person. And Buddha teach you how to better yourself. He didn't say that. <clears throat> you have to follow me, you have to obey my commandment or something. He said, no, you are your own boss and <clears throat> you take care of yourself. That's the self-confidence, self-dependence. Okay? You don't depend on anybody, depend on yourself and the common sense. Because basically, you are a good person. Inherently, you are a good person. You have own quality you have. Just <clears throat> Make sure that remove all the obstacles so your true nature appears and you can do good. That my talk today, if anybody have any question about my talk today, I try to answer your question. If you have no question, we transfer the merit and we go chanting. Namo Sakya Mori Buddha Namo Sakya Mori Buddha Namo Sakya Mori Buddha Any positive coming action we accomplished today, we want to transfer it, we believe, with him the alignment.
Jesus.